on today's installment of Big Al's Garage, we try and diagnose a very sick Corvair. How y'all doing? On today's installment of Big Al's Garage, we're going to be diagnosing my 65 Chevy Corvair. Uh, it's got a number of issues and culminated with it leaving me stranded on the side of the road last week. So, if you remember back to my video I posted a couple weeks ago about how car enthusiasts shouldn't fear EVs, I was driving this thing, I noticed a bit of a misfire. I thought it was the dwell being off with the new points. Well, it turned out that was actually a bad accelerator pump in the driver's side carburetor. While messing with that, the car also developed a rather very nasty lifter noise. So, and actually I was driving it around on Monday to try to make that lifter noise go away, and that's when the car died completely. Today we're going to be running a compression check on the motor. I'm going to show you how to do it. And that should tell me where the problem is, and if it's something more sinister than a stuck lifter. Let's get to it. Okay, so here's the engine bay. I have all six spark plugs removed. The carburetor choke linkage, if you can see that, is disconnected. The chokes have to be open. And you'll notice I have a block of wood jamming the throttle linkage wide open. Throttle linkage needs to be wide open when you're doing this test. And I have our compression tester, which my friend Donnie was very graciously allowed me to borrow, is hooked up to the number two cylinder. 150 is the optimal range. 120, 125 is acceptable. Let's hope it's on the higher end of things. I have I noticed that lifter noise was coming from the driver's side of the motor. I've got a clip of that, which I'm going to let you see now. As you could have saw in the video, the throttle return spring was vibrating kind of violently, which leads me to believe it's a little bit more than just the lifter. So, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get in the car, I'm going to crank the motor for about the starter motor for about 15 seconds, and then come back and read the gauge, and then lather, rinse, repeat on the other five cylinders. Okay, so I'm getting in the car now. Crank. In addition to having all the spark plug wires disconnected, I also have the coil disconnected, so there's no chance of the motor firing. Just crank the motor for 15 seconds and I'm clearly doing something wrong. <sighs> We're repeating the test on cylinder number four. Gauge red high, way high. Crank the engine for 12 seconds, showing compression of almost 210. Well, that's too high. This is interesting. I showed nothing on cylinder 2. That's very much cause for concern. Let's move on and test number 6. Repeating the test on cylinder number 6. Uh, 
Okay, 210 on number six. So number six is good. Very good, actually. So is number four. I don't know if it's just the tester or... Let's take a picture of that. We're going to repeat the test on cylinder number two. Okay, repeating the test, cylinder two. How much more the battery is going to take? Oh boy. I was afraid of that. Zero compression on cylinder two. So I've conducted the compression test on all six cylinders and unfortunately cylinder number two seems to have no compression. So this is something a bit more serious than just a lifter. Might be a drop valve seat so I'm gonna have to take that cylinder head off, put the spare on, and hopefully that fixes it. You can see the spark plug for the number two cylinder. I can get that in focus for you is actually quite fouled. So, not what I wanted to see, but hopefully you guys will be able to come along on the ride as we get this car put back together. Until then, I hope you'll like, share, and subscribe, and I'll catch you next time.